surprise there. JFK. Yeah. And, yeah, you uh, don't realize how fast the carriers can go. You're going 65? 66. What? They're miles per hour. Ship? Wow. Well, they got to go at least 30 knots just to land an aircraft. Yeah, so I'm going to Bible study. I see. And if you got wind against you to start with, you got to aim. You know. catapult them from doing off? Not catapult, yes. but landing. Oh, landing. They have to land like what, the one in the F4H. They landed about 140, 145 knots. I saw a guy come in the other day. You got to land them at He came in. Installed it right over the deck, mm -hmm. and they just lowered down. Well, that's a different kind of plane, yeah. No, it wasn't a Harrier. Oh, it wasn't. He, he just stalled the aircraft because of the high wind. Yeah. He stalled it, and then it dropped yeah. down, and then it rolled good forward. <laughs> Boy, there's quite a maneuver. Yeah, yeah I, I, I heard a thing on that, and I couldn't believe how fast they said it was going. These nuclear ones, I don't know what they They'll go a lot faster than you think. They used to land at 120 in what I flew. That was enough. Oh, yeah. Well, they get used to it, though. Them jets, they have to land at them. Well, the ones I had were the F 4 H Phantoms. All right. They were 140. Let's go, at, uh, let's, let's go into uh, 2 Samuel, uh, chapter 14. Second Samuel chapter fourteen. <laughs> what? Nothing. You heard that? No, I didn't hear anything. I'm just trying to figure it out now. I'm going to do donuts on her lawn this year. <laughs> Could you drive the mower while you're at it? I was thinking four wheeler. <laughs> I'll just put, I'll put the snow plow on and dry oh, over that okay. lawn. <laughs> All right, so 2 Samuel uh, 14. David is in his, uh, his fallout. He's, this is a continued fallout today, but Daniel's, uh, David is uh, he, uh, he's having fallout because of the sin he had committed with um, Bathsheba. I know everybody likes to point to that, but... You have to understand, not everybody knew about it, for one. And uh, if you start to look at what David did and David's life and everything, you got to stop looking at all the faults and start looking at the, the good stuff of David, too, Amen. you know. And uh, he's the most popular man in Israel. If you go there, everything's about David. He was their her hero king. And uh, and he's he's got to, look, he's got to do something well. I mean, he's going to be on the throne in Jerusalem. In Ezekiel, it says he's going to be on the throne. He, Jesus is the king of kings, so there has to be kings for him to be in, uh, the king of. Amen? Right. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, well, then, uh, uh, then things are starting to uh, uh, take, take place that uh, his sons and, you know, the, he gave him a realm of things. He said, uh, the sword shall never depart from thine house. I, I will raise evil against thee out of thine own house, he said to him. These are things that are going to happen. And, uh, and this evil came out. His son, his oldest son, uh, he took privilege and he, uh, raped his, he raped his sister. Now, you have to understand something. Amnon, by all means, is, is pretty much the next king, is he not? He's the, next, he's the firstborn next king that this has happened to. Um, I noticed in Chronicles, I, I will say in Chronicles, they didn't, um, I noticed that this isn't in Chronicles. All these sins are not in Chronicles. Now, it's either that they didn't tell them, they may not have told them to anybody else. This could have been more pro done privately. I mean, do you realize you could be knowing and nobody else? Just because it's the Word of God, we know. Uh, people that read it didn't know. But maybe at that time, people didn't know anything of what was going on. Uh, Nathan was the book writer, and uh, Nathan and Nathan and David. Uh, if if you look closely in the book, what you'll notice is they got any, they got a, they must have a very good relationship. And the reason is because the the baby David's one of David's sons before Solomon is Nathan. Mm -hmm. Nathan is in the line of 
Jesus' flesh through Mary. Look up her thing. It goes through Nathan, the son before Solomon. So him and Nathan, they were great friends. And, uh, you know, there's some things you got to understand. The bigger portion of this is Israel. And Israel at this time is not like, it's not a time of mountaintop peace. It's a time of war. David is a man of war. He called him a bloody man. You know, he's a man of war. And uh, he couldn't build the temple because of it. So that tells you there's a lot of, there's a lot of strife in this uh, reign of David. So a lot of things are going to happen, even though he is a conqueror. Hey, look, George Washington. Think about it. George Washington takes over the United States. Okay, what were they using for money? What do you think? He's printing bills with himself on it already? No. <laughs> that didn't come for years, man. They didn't have anything. When you start a new country, it's one thing you don't have. You don't have money. They had Saul. Was Saul, was Saul a, uh, uh, a prudent man that went out and actually took, things, took care of things? I don't see his administration doing anything when, we're, when we were looking at it. David's people, they, they have an administration that's moving. They're making weapons now. They're having an industry where Saul didn't. And... You need, there has to be, it's a time, you know, even though Saul reigned 40 years, it was a 40, 40 years of uh, a docile, docile, do nothing government. And now David gets in and it, things are moving, but you know, it's no different. Look at uh, David is, if we would look at David like Trump now, look at Trump. Guy made great moves. The guy was a good, he wasn't a politician, good businessman. Uh, forget his attitude, who cares? Close your eyes and deal with his principles. If you deal with his principles, he's the right man. He agrees with most of us. He's a good man when it's with his principles. But here's the thing, how much turmoil? You know, I mean, with, the, with all that, you still had turmoil, so it didn't even look like there was a, it was a good time. You know, you got, uh, what, th about 30% <coughs> of the country, uh, which are insane, who hate Trump, they're just insane. That's why they're just insane people. Uh, anybody who hates, I, I mean, I don't like the guy as far as the way he is. I wouldn't, you know, he's probably a nice guy in a room and everything, but the way he portrays himself is not as great as, you know, it's not A1. But, you know, the guy's a leader, proven leader, uh, whatever this guy is, I don't know. Well, anyway, um, so he, he, he uh, Amnon, he, rapes his sister, and it's Absalom's sister, and the uh, full sister. And Absalom's just going to wait for a while. Why? Let it cool down. That means, that means something. The reason why that means something <coughs> is he's a thinker. Amnon wasn't as much of a thinker. He was more of a doer. Abs uh, Absalom's got more, in, he's got more on the ball upstairs. Intelligence, the only thing is, he's using it for evil. And there's some other underlying conditions. I don't know, Larry, you probably thought like this. He raped his sister, and it says that a rapist should be what? Killed. Killed? Stoned, yeah. yeah, it should be killed. Okay? And Abnon kills him. But Abnon's murderer. Where were the slayers? Where were the revengers of blood? Where were all these things in the place? Nobody's thinking of these things. This is a very confusing situation here with a father who's sitting there going, I don't know if I want to do it because I don't like losing other, I don't like losing my kids, obviously. You know, these are hard situations and uh, hard times for David. Amen? They are. You've got to agree with it. It's pretty hard. Well, let's go in and, and we'll see a little more as we uh, go in. And uh, Absalom, he killed Abnon. He didn't kill all the brothers. And Jonadab was the... Uh, uh, he, he was basically the, one of the middlemen. Uh, you know, he's that guy. Yeah, yeah, maybe you do it. You can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he watched it happen. And, um, and now uh, this is going to be a little bit more of the fallout. Absalom had fled. And uh, he went to his, his uh, grandpa's place, his mom's father, in Geshur, Talmai. And uh, he's now, uh, he was there. he's been there, what, three years now he's been there. That's a long time. Now, now we'll get into 14, and we'll get about half of this done and, uh, and see where it goes. And Now, Joab, the son of Zeruiah, that's David's sister, obviously, uh, perceived that the king's heart 
was toward Absalom. And Joab sent to Koa, uh, sent to Tekoa and fetched thence a wise woman and said unto her, I pray thee, feign thyself to be a mourner and put on now mourning apparel and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had a, a long time mourned for the dead. And come to the king and speak on this manner unto him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. Let's pray right there. Father, thank you. We, we ask you, Lord, to talk to our hearts tonight and, and, and let us see in a, in a good reality of what's going on here. I thank you, Lord, for all you do and how you open these scriptures to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, Joab knows something. He knows that David's heart's towards Absalom. Uh, you got to realize something. Even though Absalom did this thing, David is still his son. And this son is kind of like the heir apparent now. Uh, this kid, Joab can sees this guy. He knows the kid's smart. He knows the kid's got a little on the ball. And uh, so Joab is, is kind of like reaching out. Because, uh, you know, like I said, uh, Joab's a politician. You have to realize that. He's not just a general. He's also a, a politician here. And uh, he's got some say. And not to mention, uh, Joab is now making himself the middleman. And when you're the middleman, you're very important. Do you realize that it, a big-time middleman, what happens then? They get Nobel Peace Prizes. Did you ever notice that? Teddy Roosevelt and all them. They were middlemen. Middlemen between Japan and Russia. And, and, uh, Japan and Russia. Uh, those middlemen, if you remember, uh, uh, Trump was a pretty good middleman. Uh, a few years back, he, he was getting all that peace in the Middle East. He was the middleman in the middle, a politician. Uh, Joab is being a middleman here. I'm going to try and work this out. I'm going to gain favor on both sides. Why? I don't want to lose my job, and I want my family to do well and prosper in Israel. Amen. Not stupid, huh? Okay, but they got to understand something. That's the way the world works. That isn't the way God works. And this is God's people. Nobody thinks of that. Amen. So uh, here, here he, uh, his, he knows the king's heart was towards him. So he's going to uh, try to get Absalom uh, to bring Absalom back. So uh, he saw something. Now you got to think about this. This this lady's coming in, and uh, and it says she's a wise. Woman, this is their plan. They're going to bring in this wise uh, woman here. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but when somebody says why, or is it wisdom or something else? Well, uh, maybe it's wise in the world. Okay, and uh, the wisdom of this world is uh, what to God? It's foolishness to God. But uh, let's go over to uh, Job chapter uh, five. Job chapter five. Forward. Job chapter 5, talking about like this lady here, because she's, she's cunning. She's a very crafty woman, and uh, it says she's a wise a woman. She's crafty. She's got a plan. Look down at verse number 12. Uh, he disappointed the devices of the crafty. That's God. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. You see, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. You're not going to get it past God on this. Okay, I don't even think it's going to get past David, just so you know. All right? So what is he hiring? Well, look what it says. It says he got found a, way, uh, a wise woman, and he says to her, he said to her, I pray thee, uh, feign thyself a mourner. What's that? Act like a mourner. And put on now mourning apparel. And anoint thought thyself with oil, but be as a woman with a costume on. Is that not what you're seeing? Okay. And uh, that had a long time mourned for the dead. And do what? And come to the king. And speak on this matter unto him. Watch this part. So Joab put the words in her mouth. What do you mean? He gave her the script. 
You got you understand now what we got here? He's got a paid actress here. He paid somebody. Look, she's gonna go in front of the king. She's just not a woman off the street. Yo, she's just a smart woman off the street. No, she's gonna go act. You're gonna go into the king. You could die. But they know David. But still, you're talking about the man. The 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 Bible says uh about a king where the, where the word of a king is is power. Who's gonna tell him what to do? And that's 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 what you have to understand. There's power in this position of king, and here comes some woman. Joab goes to a woman. What do you think he's going to, going down to some dumb woman on the street? He's going to get a professional, and that's what he does. He goes and gets a professional here, and 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 tells her exactly what to do. We're not talking about dummy, some dumb guy. We're talking Joab. He's a he's head of the army, and what does he do? He puts puts the words in. Uh, to her mouth. He scripts the words and, and gives her what to say. Now, and when the woman of Tekoa spake to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance and said, help, O king. Okay, she knows exactly the words to say. She didn't come in and say, you know, with a gracious thing. She came in, what was that bottom line up front? What's that? I need help. I need help. It's kind of hard to get an audience with the king here. I mean, you've got to realize something. We're talking about somebody that's in charge of the million or so people. Uh, people are online to listen to, to, for, to talk to him, and this woman's getting in. How do you think she got in? Well, Joab got her in. Amen. So uh, she, comes, she comes in, and she spake to the king, fell on her face, help, O king. And the king said unto her, What ail with thee? What's the problem here? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and my husband is dead. Okay? So she's a widow. That's what the first thing that he's going to find. And then it says that thy handmaid had two sons, and they strove together in the field. And there was none to part them, but the one smote the other and slew him. And... Behold, the whole family is risen against thine handmaid. And they said, deliver, uh, deliver him that smote his brother that we may kill him for the life of his brother whom he slew. And we will destroy the heir also. And so they shall quench my coal which is left and shall not leave to my husband neither name uh, nor remainder upon the earth. So she comes up with her a uh, parable here. Remember, these are Joab's words. Now, what is Joab trying to do? He's trying to make a parable that's kind of like what's going on in, uh, in, in, in David's life with his two sons. But you got to understand something. That's not even like it. I mean, this is a misrepresentation for it. It appears to be similar, uh, but um, it, it's, it's got like dark roots in it, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not the same. Uh, what we're dealing with is, oh, Amnon, he raped his sister, and, uh, and this guy Absalom got together and premeditated it, planned it, brought people. There was witnesses. There was nobody witnesses to those two boys in the field. That sounds like a, maybe a, the story of maybe a, a Abel, Cain and Abel, yeah, Cain and Abel. Something like that. They were in the field striving, you know, and, and uh, you know, and... The only one that knows about it is, uh, you know, God and Cain, I guess, like that. I don't see anybody else around there. Uh, but that's basically what he's saying, that one smote and, and slew him. Now, uh, how did she know the story if she wasn't there? you got to understand, he just said nobody was there to break him up. What was there, somebody there with their uh, phone taking videos like everybody else does these days? I mean, nobody helps anybody. Everybody just takes videos today. Get six videos of one incident. Uh, it's crazy, but see, here's here it is. There's none that was to part them, okay? Well, who turned them over? Who would have known anything? How did you know, you know? So the story first, it sounds uh, suspect, the story. Uh, and, and I noticed something else. Uh, if Joab is David's friend, why, why is he talking in parables? You always talk in parables to your friend? I mean, I understand that God speaks in parables, to his people when they're not doing right. That's what he went to David for. David, you're not doing right. Uh, he spoke in a parable through Nathan. Nathan gave him a parable, and that's how it spoke. What, did Joab know about this? He was back in the field. Somebody tell him. 
because Joab uses the same exact technique. But he pays somebody to do it because obviously he can't tell a good story. He's not, you know, you got to understand Nathan's a prophet. What's that? He's a preacher. Preachers know how to talk. What do you think they do all day up here? Talk for an hour or so. It's easy now. When I first started out, it wasn't good. It's easy now. <laughs> so, but he gives him a parable. What did he learn? Something from Nathan? But it's almost like it, but there's two, two that, and she, he slew him. And now the family, what, what is, what's the problem with the family? Well, they know the law. Are they not under the law? Here, go to Numbers 35. <coughs> 280. It's uh, well, it's all around uh, verse number 9. So uh, the Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Look at verse 9, uh, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities uh, to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee uh, thither, which killeth any person at unawares. Okay? And they shall be unto you cities of for refuge from who? From the avenger that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. Verse 16. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone uh, wherewith he may die and he die, he is a murderer. And the murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he uh, smite him with a hand weapon or of wood uh, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, and the murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. And if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by laying of weight that he die, or in enmity, division, smite him with his hand that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity and uh, have cast upon him anything without laying of weight or with any stone wherewith uh, a man may die, seeing him not and cast it upon him, then he died and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Then con the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to uh, to these judgments and the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the re revenger of blood and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge whether he was fled and he shall abide in it until the death of the high priest which was anointed uh, with the holy uh, oil and uh, what he's saying basically is that um, uh, just say you, uh, he, somebody kills somebody and it was uh, by just say it's by accident didn't mean it. You know, uh, they were out in the field, and, um, and uh, well, me and Larry had almost this incident. We were out in the field one day. Larry turns around, and, and we had to put a spike in the ground. So uh, Larry turns around, he looks up at me, and he says to me, he says, he says, uh, he has a stake in his hand, he says, when I nod my head, hit it. <laughs> you guys are terrible. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, just say it was by accident. He tried to hit the, 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 I was trying to hit the stake. I hit Larry in the head. He died. Oh, well. You know, he's in heaven. I'm not. He's not happy. I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, when he, once he goes and, uh, you know, I, I, it was an accident. I didn't mean it to happen, you know. Uh, so uh, all of a sudden, I, I, here comes Mary. She's going to come after me. Now, he's got sons or whatever, you know, family, whatever. But the revengers of blood are coming. i got to run. Where i got to run to a Levite city, a city of refuge. I didn't mean it. But if I meant it, then I should die, right? Amen. The man who sheds blood, he should die. Did, did, uh, didn't Absalom, did he not mean it? It was an accident? 
oh, I guess he brought everybody down for the party and, and, this, and he told those guys to kill him, but afterwards, just stop, stop, and they still did it, I don't know. It doesn't make sense, you know, it, this is a bad, this is a bad story, and it's deceptive story, and, it's, and, it, and the only thing it can give is David a, a, good, a good alibi reason, or not an alibi, but a good reason uh, to be more deceptive. But um, Joab puts the words in, his, in, her, in, in this woman's mouth, and, and she gives this story, and, and it appears to be a good story, but the parable doesn't even line up here. And, uh, and if you haven't noticed it yet, uh, it's like a straw man tactic. Anybody know, you know, blame it on somebody else. Get it, nobody, everybody's good, you know, put it there. Uh, liberals do that kind of stuff. They always have a strong man tactic, if you ever notice. Uh, they always, they like blame it on somebody else. Or this is the big reason it happened, you know, over here is the reason. That's a straw man. To get, put, to put it on somebody else, the straw man, okay? And, uh, and, and, he, and but she says some. she says, so that they shall look at verse number seven. And behold, the whole family is risen against thine handmaid. Uh, and they said, Deliver him that smote his brother, uh, that we may kill him for the life of his brother whom he slew. And uh, we will destroy the heir also. And so they shall quench my uh, coal. They're going to extinguish my family, is what she's saying. Which is left and shall not leave to my husband neither name nor a re remainder upon the earth. Okay, so she's talking about there, this is a bad story, uh, and, and she's she's turning around and giving it like this is a real story that's about your kids. Uh, verse number eight, and the king said unto her, unto the woman, uh, go to thine house, and and uh, I will give charge concerning thee. Uh, he wants time to think about this. You see, you got to understand something. David's not a dummy. He's listening to the story. David is starting to, those wheels are starting to turn inside him. You have to understand, this guy's a king. He's not, he didn't, he didn't raise to it by stupidity. God chose it. God doesn't chose idiots. You understand? Except here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so uh, verse number, verse number nine, and the woman, and the woman of Tekoa uh, said, Unto the king, my lord, O king, the iniquity, the iniquity be on me and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be uh, guilt, guilty. She's she trying to safeguard for a while these things. Um, you, you know, kind of like your, the iniquity be on me. You're free from God's law. Uh, imagine that God's making the law, and what she's saying is, I'll take the kit. And you're free from. Is that the way it works? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Larry, I know you lied yesterday, but I'll take that one for me. No, he's going to deal with that. God, God's already dealt with that, but he deals with it. You know, he confesses that before God, and that's the way it goes. It's Larry's transgression. It's not somebody else's transgression. They're trying to make it like they can move it back and forth. Well, you know, we just go up to God. We'll tell him this. He doesn't know any better, you know? And... Uh, She's trying to safeguard him, but she's, she's doing it in a wrong way, and she's very cunning here. And the king says to, says, king says to her, Whosoever uh, saith aught to thee, bring him to me, and, 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 he shall not touch, and he shall not touch me. Well, uh, look, I'm the king. I'm giving orders. Nobody's going to touch you while this time. Here's your protection. Is my word is your protection right here. Uh, so she turns around. She says, I pray thee, uh, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the revenge of the blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, as the, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son uh, fall to the earth. So David, David is giving her that, that his order is good. But you have to understand something, though. David still has, a, has, a, has a, the law to deal with here. Okay, the law supersedes David. Uh, you, you, you do understand that. Uh, uh, I know today men uh, supersede the law today, but actually we were supposed to actually be a republic, and, uh, of, and that is supposed to be a country of laws in which the majority doesn't rule. The rule of law is supposed to be uh, the ruler. But, of course, what happens? Well, we don't like them laws. We're not going to follow them. And that's what happens in time. Not to mention, you got what about uh, 
You got about 100,000 lawyers just in one state trying to manipulate laws and ruin laws. That's what lawyers do. They destroy the word of law, okay? They take away the power of it too. Find loopholes, find it over here while we were doing this, you know? And uh, so it makes it a little different. And then they fight these, and then all it takes is, in time, liberal judges come up. And what do they do? They say, oh, yeah, good enough. And if you get more and more liberal judges in time, guess what? You will have a lawlessness as we do now. A two-tier justice system that is a mess. And, uh, but if, and David's dealing with the fact that this law is written by who? By God. Okay? And... Uh, he said, verse number, verse number twelve. Then the woman, then the woman said, "Let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto my lord the king." Here comes the setup, and he said, "Say on." And the woman said, "Wherefore then hast thou uh, thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king doth speak this thing as one which is faulty." In that, in that the king uh, doth not fetch home again his banished. But wait a second, this isn't the same thing. Uh, Absalom, Absalom was a premeditated murder. They're making this like it was an accident. Uh, is she giving David something to say? Uh, or something in that area? I mean, yeah, we don't see it in the Chronicles, we see it in the Book of the Kings, but guess what? God could write it in the book of the Kings, and we'd know about it, but nobody else would know about it until they started to read it years later. Okay? So uh, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with an actress, and she's very good. And we're dealing with a, a guy named Joab, who's supposed to be uh, the king's friend. What a friend is he? Uh, this situation needs to go to God. Yeah. Amen. This is a, David has a hard situation to decide on, but you know what David's doing? David's sitting back on it. Why? He's dealing with his sons. And you know something? He knows something about Absalom. Mm -hmm. He's not saved. He knows Amnon was saved. He doesn't know that Absalom, he knows Absalom's not saved. He's a rebellious kid. That's what kind of kid he is. What's the first thing he did when he got in trouble? He didn't stand up for it and take, the, take his medicine. What did he do? Die down the road. That's the only thing I looked at Absalom as. He's, not a, he, he, he's, a, he's a good leader, but he's a faulty leader. Problem. He's a he's a good leader, but he has a he has something in his uh, backyard needs to be taken care of. And what does he do when it happens? He took off. It's a rebel. What's he going to do when the things get tough? You got to look at that. What's that? He'll run. He's not ready for being a king. He ain't ready to ever be a king if he's going to if he's not going to stand up for his his uh, his faults and everything that he has right there. And uh, but she turns around. She says she says that you fetch him home. Uh, Verse 14, for we must needs, for we must needs die, and are as water split on the ground, which cannot be gathered to get up again. Neither doth God respect any person. She's right there. God doesn't respect, but that's that's what I'm trying, that's what God's trying to say in the law. He's no respecter of person when it comes to judgment. Okay? Uh, murder is murder. Amen. Rape is rape. Uh, for, he says, uh, God respect any person, yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled uh, from him? I mean, uh, okay, here's the problem you're going to find in Absalom. It's been three years he's been in Geshur. He went two years even uh, stewing on this and then kills his brother. Uh, there's a real way that God has for doing this, and you know what it is? It's called repentance. He needs to turn to God, this kid. But then again, you know, you're talking about probably some kid that ain't saved. So uh, is it always uh, repentance? Is it repent? He needs to get saved first, but he has to come. He has to, he has to take, uh, take, take responsibility uh, for his action here. And uh, so they're trying to get it through like, hey, we need a cover-up here. It's, a, it's, it's common among leaders, cover-ups. They're all over the place. Uh, does anybody know of a cover-up right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it. The whole thing's a cover-up. We're, we're in a movie, basically. I'm in a reality show that I can't get out of. <laughs> the only good thing is I got a front row seat to the end. <laughs> Amen. 
So uh, let's look down at verse number 15. He says, Now therefore, that I am come to speak of this thing unto my Lord the King. This is it. It is because the people have made me afraid. And thy handmaid said, I will now speak unto the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid. Uh, I, I love that part where it said, uh, it is because the people have made me afraid. You ever see when something happens? Hey, just get up and say, so. just say, hey, I, hey uh, you know, I just, I just found out I have stomach cancer. Hey, did you ever try taking leaves of a mint leaf of a this or that? And, you know, everybody's a doctor. Everything that happens in your life, everybody's the expert. Hey, let me tell you, I know this. I know this. I, okay. And you've got to bear with it, you know. Uh, I, I had a friend, his, his uh, daughter got uh, cancer. His phone rang on and on and on for everybody telling him what to take. He's like, man, she couldn't even take all that stuff. It's too big for her. After a while, she'd be huge. But basically, that's everybody's, a, everybody's got as a law degree uh, right now. Everybody's a political analysis on Facebook. They go on there, and I got all the politics down. Uh, you know, uh, next thing you know, everybody's an expert with the gravitational pull if they say something about that. And everybody was a, a everybody knew about diseases when that COVID junk came, and uh, everybody knew about everything. Why? It's all two cents. That's what people do. Oh, let me tell you, this is the way it is. And they get afraid. They get they get her all afraid. Be is what she's saying. They get her all afraid. Well, you got to understand something. She's still an actress. Mm -hmm. This is all an act, okay? She's very good because she's got David now into it for a little bit, okay? So that's basically what she's saying. And, and Absalom, you know, this guy's never going never gonna to do this. He's never going to repent. And, of course, we know in, what is it, uh, what is it, Luke 17. Luke 17 talks to the gods. Go to Luke 17. See what Luke 17 is. Our, our, the prodigal son. Verse number uh, one. Then, then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, uh, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repents, do what? There's the way, isn't it? And if he trespass against thee seven times in a a day and seven times in a day again uh, turn again to thee saying I repent thou shalt do what forgive him. forgive him and the apostle said unto him increase our faith man <laughs> increase our faith why it takes a lot to do that doesn't it Larry? it does imagine that seven times I gotta tell you the truth man it's after right like, two or three why are you hanging around him though anymore <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you guys got that one friend who uh, you who's done you wrong and done you wrong, and you just keep coming back and you feel sorry for him, you know, and you keep forgiving him. But you know what the problem is? That pro that person's never really repented of the problem, so it just keeps happening to you, and you're you you basically become a fool. Uh, you know, uh, that, that's what you find out. If there's no repented heart, and there's look, everybody can be sorry, but it's a repented heart. Don't use that against me. <laughs> so uh he's not it's not in proper form it, you know uh, i think david would love to forgive him but there's nothing here to for, there's no there's no heart condition here there's more of a heart problem than anything else and it says uh, verse number verse number 16 for for the king for the king will hear uh, to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the, of the man that would destroy me and my sons together out of the inheritance of God. 
You notice how she's, how she's putting that spiritual tone into things. I'm not going to get from God. Look, uh, uh, look, if it's that way, and God don't need it. You don't need an Aaron in your name. You've got a bad one. Better to have a good name. You know? Amen. And he says, uh, she says, then, the hand, then thine handmaid said, the word of my Lord, the king, shall be, shall be comfortable. For as an angel of God, so is my Lord, the king, to discern good and bad. Therefore, uh, the Lord thy God will be uh, with thee. Uh, boy, flattery will get you somewhere, huh? Okay, she says, like a, for as an angel... Of God, just like an angel, you know, not sinless and all that stuff. You you give good, you can you can do it without sin and, and give good counsel. Uh, but <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is not the way God wants wants to do it. You know, uh, he wouldn't do it this way. Verse number eighteen. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Now watch, hide hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, let my Lord, the king, now speak. And it all comes out right here in 19. And the king said, is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? What's that mean? Well, David just woke up. David just woke up right now. You know what he realized? Hey, wait a second. This ain't jiving. You see, look, like I said, you got to look at David. He's a king. God chose him. He's not a dummy. Okay? Joab wasn't as good as David. He wasn't chosen. Well, he had all the brothers, Eliab and all them. He took the youngest one that was out there in the field. Do you realize as a young kid he's, he's making psalms? This is a brilliant kid. This kid was a sharpshooter, could throw a, you know, could toss stones man and, and pinpoint them you know this is a this guy this guy everybody when he after that he still kept it look when something like that happens and he killed the giant you got to understand as soon as he got a government everybody hate him nobody likes the hero after uh, after the hero's done you know it's now get rid of that guy why well the, the leaders up top don't like him he's competition you see, we're in the age of, you've got to understand, politics is the age of mediocrity. It's always, I shouldn't say the age, po po politics is mediocrity. If you're real good, they don't vote for you and they get rid of you. What do you think is happening right now? We don't want that guy to be ruling over us, of course. Why? Well, he's smart. We want that other zombie over there that didn't do anything and poops his pants. That's what we want. Yeah. That's the age of media. You ever noticed that? Haven't you ever noticed that mediocrity? Yeah, probably a, a, a few guys slipped through because they people really loved them, and that's like Ronald Reagan and, and Donald Trump. Other than that, those, uh, those flamboyant guys, and what, what happens to them in history? Nobody likes them. Yeah. Do you know that uh, Ronald Reagan, one of, probably one of the best presidents we've ever had, uh, they just put out a list of performance. He was near the bottom, and Trump was like near the bottom. Do you know Joe Biden was above Reagan? I mean, come on, the guy, the guy's a zombie. Doesn't even know where he's at. Number, number fourteen. That's the it's stupid. You know? Wow. I mean, <laughs> that's the. But you got to understand something. That's the wisdom of the world right now. That's how the world looks. Uh, the world doesn't like anybody that's an overachiever. Uh, look at a guy like Patton. He's great for a war, but after the war's over, get rid of this guy. You remember Douglas MacArthur? He's a great leader, one of the best in the world. The war gets over. He goes to Korea. We need him again. Yeah, yeah, get rid of communism. Then what? As soon as they didn't need him anymore and he made... He, he, he wasn't on their line, what happened? Bye-bye. We don't need him no more. Put him in. Put him out the pasture. Why? Because he's too good. We need some mediocre guys. You know, now it's even worse. You know what we have now? Good criminals. Yeah. On both sides. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so he says here, he says in 19, he says, he says, uh, David, David's kind of looking like he's compromised here a little, but he figures it out right here. And he says, hey, look, is Joe, isn't, is, this sounds like Joe Lab. <laughs> well, he's my cousin. You know, I grew up with him. I'd be always smacking him around when he was little. 
I know that little guy over there. I know how he acts. He says, is not Joab in this? And the woman answered and, and said, As thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from what that my lord the king hath spoken. She, you know, she turns around and says, Well, you know, can't get anything past thee right now. For thy servant Joab, he bade me. And he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. All right, get the guards in here. Lock them up. Really, think about it. Yeah. You're wasting this guy. You're wasting the king's time right here. Right. He's an important man. He doesn't need somebody coming in playing parable games. He's not Nathan. This is this woman is not Nathan, and Nathan is not this woman. There's a lot of difference between me going up to Larry and telling him, "Hey, Larry, this is the way it is. I got to be straight with you. You need to do this. Uh, this is what the Bible says." And then my or and then you coming over to him say, hey, "Larry, I got to tell you something." And you're, Larry's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I'm okay with the pastor, and I don't even like him. But you, no, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, that's what it's looking like. You know, as she turns around and she finds out, and uh, he finds it. She find, she, this is all coming around, and she even says, Joab, he put the words into my mouth. To fetch about this form of speech hath thy servant Joab done. This thing. So she, now she just tells him what what Joab's done, but he can't do nothing to Joab. Why? Joab knows he's a murderer too. Yeah. <laughs> and my lord is wise according to the wisdom of an angel of God. Let's flatter him some more, huh? <laughs> Flattery will get you somewhere. Amen. And. Uh, <laughs> She says, my, my Lord is wise and according to the wisdom of the angel of God to know all things that are in the earth. And, here's a, and the king says unto Joab, all right, stand right here. I got, I'm going to put you in change and you're going to prison. Mm -hmm. Now he says, behold now, I have done this thing. Go therefore and bring the young man Absalom Again, so David turns around and he realizes something that, you know, David really does want Absalom. His heart was toward Absalom to bring him back. And here they'd make this whole play up. He gets a paid actress to come in. I don't know how the whole thing didn't fall apart. But then I noticed something out of it. When you're sitting back and you're looking at it and David's taking the judgment of this and he's listening... And he's going through all, all the things. It just doesn't sound right. It's not scriptural. And David does read the book. You can tell he does quote scripture. And then all of a sudden, it, the, the, he starts to go, oh, wait a second here. I knew who could have thought of that. Joab thought of this. And he'd say, but you got to realize something. What did the first, first verse say? David's heart was toward Absalom. Absalom. So what's that mean? Well, don't you think David would like an excuse, too, to go get that boy? Mm -hmm. David's going to use this to now at least do something. But there's going to be a problem. You know what the problem is? David's going to have to deal with the Lord in this also. Nobody ever realized we think we're getting, oh, we got something going. But then you got the Lord involved. And the Lord, it's his people. He's going to move the king like like the river. And things are going to be a little more uh, changed in this. And uh, uh, let's go on. Let's see if we, we have 15 minutes. Let's look more at this. And it says in verse number 22, And Joab, he fell, on, he fell to the ground on his face. Why not? I got what I wanted. And he bowed himself, and he thanked the king. Man, this thing worked. And uh, Joab said, Today the servant knoweth that I have found grace in the sight of my Lord the king, he didn't throw me in jail. In that the king hath fulfilled the request of his servant. Joab got his way. Amen. They beat God's word in this. Didn't go by God's word. They just beat it. Okay, so Joab arose and went to Geshur and brought Absalom uh, to Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, you know, I got to say this. 
I look back at that verse 22. Today the servant knoweth that I have found grace in the sight. You've got to understand, the, old, the world is always gives compliments when the other side or the authority bends to their needs. They give compliments. Uh, I mean, do you realize right now that Joab is making David, he's complimenting David, he's, uh, he's saying great things of David doing what? Going against God's word. Wouldn't that be some? You see somebody standing up, but they're standing up for you against, against God's word. That's what the liberals do. The liberals compliment people that stand up against the rule of law. And that's what Joab's doing right now. He's complimenting David for standing up against God's word. God had a way to do this. David is not supposed to be a respecter of persons. You have to understand, when he gets in judgment, he's not supposed to say, well, there's a crime committed here, but he's my son. Remember, we went over that in the law. God says what? It doesn't matter. That's why you're there. I want a righteous judgment. What does that say? Even the best can fall on that. And we've seen that many times and many times again. Verse number uh, 20, 24, and, and the king said, let him uh, turn to his own house. He brought him, and the king says, let him turn to his own house and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and saw uh, not the king's face. So obviously there's no restoration right here. And, uh, and, and, and you can see something that David turns him away. Why? David knows he's doing wrong. David knows it. He's going to turn. He told him to bring Absalom. What good is this? No repentance, no nothing, no makeup, no nothing. Just move him on. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide my face from it, and everything's going to work out in the end, I guess. Verse number 25, but in all Israel there was none to be so much praised as Absalom. Why? For his beauty. Hey, you know the people. Hey, look, he's going to get looked at. He's a good-looking guy. Uh, you know, uh, let's face it, Danny DeVito is not beating Arnold Schwarzenegger in the good-look contest. Amen? If, if you get, uh, Danny DeVito could be the best leader. Look, Paul, I always say, Paul kind of, pa Paul probably is about the size and the kind of like, you know, the boldness of like a Danny DeVito, you know, in Taxi. Okay? And, uh, and there comes a guy like, uh, you know, like Apollos and He's an eloquent man. He's tall and he's got good stature. He dresses well. Uh, Paul, he, he got stoned last week. You know, he's gotten beat up, thrown in prison. He comes to the church house. Who are you picking? Yeah. You, you don't notice that. You know, I mean, uh, the guy. I, I, I mean, uh, the guy comes in. I'd rather have the guy come in. Like, hey, how you doing? And talk to people. Bam, he gets up. Read the word of God. Go through scripture and everything so we can go, okay, can I hear God's voice? Is he talking about the word of God, you know, or whatever? Uh, and that's, you know, that's a good guy. The other guy, he's tall and everything else. What does he say? What you want to hear? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think there are 300 people going to a church? <clears throat> if he's not telling, hey, look, some of them people left here. Why? I didn't tell them what they wanted to hear. <laughs> Let's go in there. We can sing for an hour. <laughs> and then the guy's going to get up and he, what is he going to say? He's going to congratulate me for being born. And then what? Then I go home. And I feel as good as I did when I left my home today. What's that? I was entertained for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you haven't figured this out yet, people, this is church today. And now it's into the King James crowd. We got a big meeting here. We got the good guy up here. Look, we got to travel. We got to fly this guy in. I didn't realize the book changed on the way there. Do you realize it's the same book? They don't. They, want, they think another guy can read this book better than, than, the, than the preacher that God has there. Them guys, you know what them guys are? They're, they, 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 they're losing themselves in it. The book is what's important, not that bozo up at the pulpit, and that means myself too. I'm a nothing. It's this book that changed everything. Hey, Larry, why'd you come here? You come here because you knew me? No, I didn't know you. What'd you come here for? Because I read the sign. 
Bible uh, Baptist Church. And it said what? <laughs> King James. It said King James. He can come here for me. He came here for the book. He'd been looking for a church with the book and he couldn't find one. So what do I mean? I don't mean that much. The book means everything to him. Amen. That's the difference. Yeah. Amen. The book doesn't mean everything to everybody else. Yeah. You have to realize that. And uh, But here, Absalom, he's got beauty. From the sole of his feet, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. You know, I mean, great looks, no spirituality there. But, you know... What do you need? You need do you need spirituality or, or wisdom? You need somebody that loves would love God, wouldn't you? But no, we go for these things. Verse number twenty six. And when he pulled his hair, uh, for it was at every year's end that he uh, pulled that he pulled it because the hair was heavy on him. Okay, therefore he pulled it. And he weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight, which is about, what, three pounds? That's a lot of hair. You, you know what hair is a representation of in the Bible? The soul. When you open up a, uh, when you open up a casket, guess what's still there? The hair. The, hair. <laughs> the flesh is gone, but the hair, uh, it's still there. And you know, it still grows. Still grows for a bit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the hair is a portrait. It's a portrait of the, of, of the soul. So anyway, let's keep going. He, this guy can pull his hair. He, 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 he's really beautiful. I got to tell you, I don't really, when I look at this, uh, I, I see that. I can see what's going on a little bit more. Uh, and that is, he could win a beauty contest. You know, this is Fabio, dude, you know, with his hair all out and going like this. He's the guy that stands in that picture. You know, don't look at me. I'm the dope that they did. They, they, I'm, I'm like Abbott and Costello, you know, <laughs> compared to these guys. <laughs> and, and this guy, Absalom, you know, you do realize he's like a picture of the Antichrist, too. Mm -hmm. Absalom. And, uh, and, and here he is. And who do they like? They like Absalom. You know, forget those guys over there. He's a good, he's a good looking kid. You know, and, and, and his beauty. I can see why everybody's going to let him get away with things. Why? He, he's, a, he's a good guy, you know. And it says under here, in Absalom, and unto Absalom there were born uh, three sons and one daughter. Probably because of his looks and everything, he's probably, got, he's probably a polygamist or something. But anyway, he's got three sons and, and, three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar, uh, she was a woman of a fair uh, countenance. So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. Now what's up to what? He was three years in Geshur. He was two, two years they two years after he killed Amnon. He's two years after he killed Am I mean, uh, after Amnon raped his sister, it's two years. Right. Okay, he hasn't said anything in two years. And then it's, uh, he goes to Geshur after he kills him, and then he's down there for three years. Joab picks him up, comes up here, and now how many years? Two. Seven years, right? Seven years he hasn't even seen his kid. Seven years hasn't gotten this problem solved. It's been seven years. I think it should be near top of the list right now. And the kid comes back, and what's the first thing he does? Go somewhere else. Go push it. Go over there. I, it's like, I want you here, but... I want you here when I want you. Sooner or later, I'm going to get over this, and I'm going to come see you. Figures time, I guess, will heal all wounds here. Uh, he says, uh, says, So Absalom he dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. Therefore, Absalom sent for Joab. He sent for Joab to have, to have uh, sent him uh, to the king, but he would not come. <laughs> you know, uh, man, he wouldn't even come. What does that tell you? Joab's got a pride problem too now. Mm -hmm. He got him here, but he sees something. You know what he saw? The king rejected him. That's what Joab sees. So if the king's going to reject him, well, maybe, I don't know. I better be with the king. Yeah. 
I'd rather be on the good side of this. Remember, I got a good job. I'm the head of the army. I'm the chief of, I'm the ch commander in chief of the army. Well, guess what? He doesn't want to come out there. So, uh, and, and you know, uh, maybe, maybe there's a problem here. Uh, it says, now let's see what it says. He said he would not come to him. And when he sent again to the, the second time, he still wouldn't come. Therefore, he said unto his servants, see Joab's field over there? See, Joab's field is near mine, and he hath barley there. Go, set it on fire. And Absalom's servants uh, set the field on fire. What a bold move. You, you don't realize this guy Absalom doesn't have fear. That's a, that's a harsh thing. This guy doesn't have a fear of anything. He just goes over and starts burning, at, burning the, the commander-in-chief of the army. Let's go burn his fields. Yeah, let's, let's have a good time. I mean, you realize that Joab, uh, he's going to have to, he's going to have people that go, what's going on over here? He just burned the uh, general's fields, you know? And uh, his servants are doing this, and Absalom's just causing havoc. I got to say this about Absalom. He's got servants that do anything he says. He must be a very charismatic guy that they actually believe in that he's going to be their leader someday because they're doing things that, that, I mean, could you imagine Joab seeing those two guys and I'm going to kill them. I'm going to go after them. And, and, and they're believing enough in Absalom that they did what? They committed murder. And now they're burning fields. They're committing great crimes here. And they set it on, uh, they set on fire here, and here, here we, got, we got threats of intimidation to get achievement right here. And, uh, and, and he, just Joab wouldn't come, so we got to set us fields on fire. Boy, is that a brat, kid. Then Joab arose and, and came to Absalom unto his house and said unto him, Wherefore have thy servants set my fields on fire? And that tells you one thing. You know what that tells you, Larry? His plan worked. You, you do understand he's, he's breaking the law and it's working. Why? Well, why not? You're, this is lawlessness. He's doing it. He's not getting in trouble. Why shouldn't he keep doing it? A little brat kid from the, from the house is a little rebel. And if he, gets, if he gets upset with him, what does he do? He runs to mommy's daddy. Papa! Hey, don't do that to me. My kids, I take them too. <laughs> <laughs> my grandkids amen so Joab arose he came to Absalom what'd you do with my fields on fire and Absalom answered Joab behold I sent unto thee saying come hither and that I may send thee to the king to say wherefore am I come from Geshur it had been good for me to have been there still he, he feels he's been wronged you know uh, there's a. This is a, you got to understand that this, there, this is he's speaking to authority here, and and this is what he says to him. What would you you know? What did I come here for? You know, I, I wanted to speak with my dad. What did I come here for? Now therefore, let me see my the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in him, in me, excuse me, let him kill uh, me. You know what he knows? He knows David wouldn't. That's what this kid is playing on. He's, he knows his father. He knows his father, it, it, and he knows this because his father's been going after him. You know, that kid Absalom, hey, look, uh, I, 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 my daughter, when I didn't think my daughter was saved, let me tell you something, man, I was gone. I'm ready to talk. You know, I'm ready to, to witness to her. Why? This is my daughter. Okay? I'm not going to this one over there. Why? I got this one. You know, I, I had the other, I, I had uh, three of them. Two of them got saved, and I was worried about one more because uh, she made her profession very young at age, so I was worried about it. So I'm running over there to figure it out while the other two, what? I can let them cool on ice for a while and know they're saved. But I'm worried about that one over there. I'm worried about that one. And David is too. And, uh, and, he, and this kid knows it. He says that there be any iniquity, let him do it. He's not going to do it. Verse number 33, so Joab came to the uh, king and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king, bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And what happened? And the king kissed Absalom 
and then it ends right there. That's the heart of a father, but you have to understand something. Right now, it's like he's pardoning him. Go to Proverbs chapter uh, 19. Look down at verse number 19. A man of great wrath shall suffer what? Punishment. Punishment. For if you deliver him, yet thou must do it again. You're going to have to do it. You're going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Why? You got him out of trouble the first time. And then and when it's over. Hey, you ever have somebody uh, that, that get stuff from you? It's been going on a while. You know, they keep coming back and keep coming back. Uh, just so you know, if you say no, they never come back again. That's right. I don't know why you had to do it and you didn't learn the first time. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Make sure you stand out there in the, in the way when I, dri when I drive out. <laughs> Amen. So, now I want to look at a little bit, look at Absalom's picture here. Okay. Now he grows up. He's he's a son of royalty. It's been a political, it, it's been a political marriage. Mother's a princess, so he's grown up a little spoiled, probably. Okay, but here's the thing: he, he's he was an angry kid, and something happened to his sister, and you know he took that temper he had, and he went after it. Now he he, he accomplishes what he accomplished. Uh, David could have stopped all this right here. He could have stopped it in the beginning and just turned Amnon in and got it over with. But instead, now it's made a mess now. And uh, now you got to think, think for Absalom's way. Okay? He thought he's done right. He did think he did right. You know, in the beginning, i got to get this guy back. But then he realizes, after all of it, he's realizing, hey, this ain't going the right way. Wind up with a pain in his back. <laughs> so he takes off. He takes off. Now, it's, like I said, it's five years he's coming back. Five years. And his dad sent for him. And here he comes in. And all of a sudden, Joab says, well, we've got to go this way. The king doesn't want to see you. And he goes back, and now it's two more years. He's been waiting on He's been waiting to go in line for two years. And then finally, when David comes up, he just he kisses him on the head. And it's like, well, that's, I guess it's all over. I, I actually think it would have been great if it would have stopped there. And they would have never mentioned Absalom again. But soon it's going to come that kid is going to get worse and he's going to get worse you got to understand the way of the transgressor is hard okay and he's going to keep going and he's going to keep going until he meets his untimely death he's going to be that son that is that brings a shame you know he's going to be that son of shame that was uh, Saul's son he's going to be a son like that now Joab thought in the beginning this is the kid man he's got charisma He's got the ability to be a leader. People like him. I better realize what side of the fence I'm on. But now what do you think Joab says? <laughs> you have to understand something. As a picture of the Antichrist, the Antichrist has no loyalty to anybody. Right. He's only got people he uses to get what he wants in the end. Amen? All right, so uh, next week we'll uh, see how the rebellion of this kid's going to come after that. And... Uh, how his characteristics are going to be compared to his father's, and uh, how he'll stand, try and stand above. But the character of the man is what's going to uh, actually come out of this all. And uh, you're going to find that Absalom really doesn't have any character uh, in this. Nobody's going to trust him. Nobody's going to stand with him in the end. He just doesn't have the character as a man like David does as a leader. So it's never going to work out. All right, so uh, uh, we'll end there next week at chapter uh, 15. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for uh, the chapter, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord Father, for talking to our hearts, uh, seeing that kid like Absalom, seeing the, the, the way Joab even moved, Lord Father, being as deceptive as he is, and, uh, and David just still... He's still, still going through his fallout, Lord Father, and it's just a confusing time. Although David be 
a righteous man and a good a good man. I thank you, Lord, and I love you, Lord Father, and I uh, just ask you, Lord God, to bless us this weekend and bless the people who are going to come in and get their hearts ready, Lord Father, to hear thy word that they will be changed by knowing you. And I thank you that for all you do, Lord. Thank you for the prayers that went up today. And Lord, and I, and I pray for Andy right now, Lord, Lord, who's not doing real well, Lord God, and is at rehab. Pray you help him and also Christy, Lord Father. Uh, thank you for all you're doing. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, Duel. Uh, is that wonderful? Yeah. Hi, Teresa. That's low speed. The first motor. What's that? Teresa's not doing well? She says. No, I said, Teresa told me that Andy This new one has a red and a black and a white. Good evening. Not feeling the greatest. Now, all of our family, blue. hope all is well yeah. with all of you. It is, actually. I, I hope you guys are doing better. All right, Maggie, it's good to see you. I didn't see Marilyn, but uh, Duel, if you're on high, man. You can put your hand down. You have to wait.